This is specimen paper B for the IGCSE in computer science for the new specification. We have another scenario. This time it's about hospitals and patients and checking temperatures and checking pulses. Um, it's worth 15 marks as before. You'll be required to write an algorithm using either pseudocode or program code for the context provided. You could probably do this in bullet lists and still get marks, but let's stick to the mark scheme. It is expected that you should spend 30 minutes answering this question. So step one, as before, I'm going to read through this and I'm going to be looking to declare all the arrays, the variables and constants I think I'm going to use in this program. So I'll read this to you. The name of the patients are stored in a one-dimensional 1D array called patient. Of the type string, so it's going to be words, names of patients. A separate two-dimensional 2D array called reading stores the latest data recorded about each patient. The array already contains the readings taken by a nurse for each patient. And this, these um, readings are temperature, measured to one decimal place, and the pulse rate is a whole number. And we've got some ranges here, a maximum and a minimum range, um, inclusive range. Um, so it's 31.6 to 37.2 inclusively. And pulse is, um, as I said, 55.0 or 100.0. Okay, the hospital number given to the patient is used for the index on both arrays. This is a value between one and a thousand inclusive. So we could have a maximum of a thousand patients. Okay, but when we type in something like patient 15, okay, it will find the 15th patient in the patient um, array. And it will also find the readings, this information, um, at position 15 in the 2D array. Basically, it's a 2D array because it stores two different values, the temperature and the pulse rate. When the data for a patient is checked, a warning is given if any of the readings are out of range. If both readings are out of range, a severe warning is given. Okay, so let's find... So here is my code, the declaration of arrays, variables, constants. I want to declare the patient as a, as a 1D array. Yeah, ranging from 1 to 1,000, and it's going to be strings because it's going to store people's names, patients' names. I'm going to declare um, reading, um, readings here. Maybe I miss the S off, but don't worry about that. So I'm going to declare readings, and it's going to be a 2D array. So it's going to store um, 1 to 1,000 and two different things. It's going to store the pulse, and it's going to store the temperature. And these are going to be real numbers. I've stored it as real numbers, okay? Because there's a whole number there and a decimal there. But if I look at the ranges... I've got 31.6 to 37.2 for the temperature and 55.0 and 100.0 inclusive for the pulse. So that's my 2D array set up there. I've then got the hospital number, um, 1 to 1000, and that's going to be just an integer. Okay, and then I've got my constants, which are the temperatures I've just mentioned, the highest and the lowest temp, the pulse high and the pulse low. So that goes in there like so. Okay. So, step one, if we're talking about the actual procedure itself, write a procedure using pseudocode or program code that meets the following requirements. Takes a hospital number as a parameter. Okay, so it's taking the hospital number. Um, if the hospital number is greater than or equal to one, and the hospital number is less than or equal to a thousand, then, then we're going to do all this here. Okay, so we're checking validation. Is the number between these two values? If it isn't, and right at the bottom of the code, I've put it at the bottom, I'm going to um, say else. If it is, do this. Else, output the hospital number is not valid. Okay, and if. So that's going to be like our, our first if. And then I'm going to do like a nested if inside for all my outputs. Okay, step three. If the hospital number is valid, output the patient's name. Well, that's straightforward. So if hospital number is between, is greater than or equal to one and it's um, less than or equal to a thousand then we output the patient's name so output name of patient and that's taking that um, based on the hospital number so it's taking it from the patient array yeah and it's using the hospital number so that's why i've done it like that okay so there we go hospital number position from the patient array then we're going to start with the readings well first of all we're going to look at normal data so if the patient temp um, using the hospital number, if the patient temp is less than or equal to temp high and greater than or equal to temp low and less than or equal to pulse high and greater than or equal to pulse low, then output normal readings. Okay, based on that. So that's the first step. That's the first sort of selection. The first if, then, and if selection for normal readings. 
Okay, we then need to move on to the warning messages. You can see here, app warning and the name of the reading, e.g. pulse, if one reading is out of range. So we're gonna do this for pulse and we're gonna do it for temperature. So I'm gonna do two separate if statements. So first of all, the temperature. If the patient temp, based on the hospital number, well, based on whichever patient it is, remember we're using this for indexing, is greater than temp high or is less than temp low and basically pulse is okay, then I'll put the warning temperature. Okay, so if these are out of range, then obviously we're gonna get a warning message from the temperature. Yeah, so we've gotta do that for the temperature and also I'm gonna do the same thing for the pulse. So warning message pulse, and this time the temp's okay. It's um, less than or equal to temp high and it's greater than or equal to temp low, but it's also, it's out of range in terms of pulse high. It's higher than pulse high and it's lower than pulse low. So we're gonna get a warning on pulse. Then the final thing, we've got to check if um, if both temperature and pulse are out of range. So again, higher than temp high, lower than temp low, an or in there, and it's higher than pulse high or lower than pulse low. So if it's checking both, then obviously we're gonna output a severe warning, pulse and temperature. So that's both readings, it's giving the severe warning there. Okay, so here's the full code, so started off, declaring the arrays, the variables and constants, as you can see here. And then I start off my if statement. I'm checking to see, I'm checking, I've started a procedure whereby I'm checking if the hospital number is valid, basically between or equal to one and less than or equal to a thousand. Then I can start doing my basic checks. Is the patient, are the readings, is the, is the pulse and the temperature normal? I'm gonna base it on this. Is the pulse out of range? Is the temperature out of range? And are both out of range? So that's it gives me the severe warning there. Obviously, we're in a nested if, so when I start this one, I can finish it by saying else. So if the hospital number is valid, then do the program. Else, output the hospital number is not valid. End if, and that would end the program. Okay, so that's what I'm looking at. About 50 lines of, of code in there, but as you can see, the majority of it is the same. It's doing four different checks. Well, five different checks if we include the hospital number. Okay. Obviously, this would not run in Python, but I've, I've written it in Python. Basically, I'm declaring the patient, and then I'm declaring the um, the rest of it in terms of um, the 2D array, the readings, so the temp and the pulse. Yeah. I've got the hospital number. I've, I've set that to zero to start with, and then I have, that's what I've just done, then I have the various checkings down here, all based on if statements. Okay, so that is it. So if we look, quick look at the mark scheme, obviously AO2 is worth nine marks, AO3 is worth six marks. They're wanting us to use um, pseudocode, yeah, or functions from a programming language, e.g. Python, VB, Java, okay. Um, mentions the arrays, the variables and the constants we might be using in there. And as you can see here, the range of the programming techniques used, it's appropriate to the problem. All criteria stated for the scenario has been covered by the use of appropriate programming techniques refer to the list of techniques needed. The data structures chosen are appropriate and store all the data required. Obviously, this is not the only way of doing it. My way is in many, many different ways of doing it, um, but that is it. The data structures used um, store all the data that is required by the scenario, basically the arrays. And then AO3, the program has fully uh, has been fully commented, one man sort of has, um, suitable identifiers with names meaningful to the purpose have been used throughout. Basically, you're picking up marks there if you name any variables, you erase any constants properly. All the data structures used have meaningful names. The program is in a logical order. The solution is accurate. The solution meets all the requirements given in the question. So that is how we would get 15 marks on this task. I hope that makes sense. I hope that's okay. If not, please comment below and we'll, we'll see what we can do. Thank you very much indeed for watching and I will see you next time. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.